Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jordan here from Tightline TV and today I want to share with you my favorite baits to bed fish with. Um, this is the time of year that I feel like you either love it or you hate it, but you know, it happens every year and it's something we got to tackle. So, um, you know, these are my baits that I choose and that are most beneficial to me and I'm hoping they'll work for you as well. So, we're gonna hop right into that, but first I kinda wanted to cover what bed fishing is in case you guys aren't familiar with that. Uh, so basically what that means is, you know, this is the time of year which is known as the spawn. And the spawn is where, you know, the female bass have now moved up, they've bedded, they've laid their eggs, and uh, now they're gonna sit here and they're gonna guard their eggs. And um, so what we're doing here and what's known as bed fishing is we're taking baits and we're pitching them right into their nest to cause a reaction strike or to get a strike from them guarding their eggs. Why do we do this? Because this time of year or during these months, during the spawn, this is pretty much the most productive way to catch bass. So these bass are guarding their eggs right now, which is their baby. So just like any other animal or anything, their instinct is to protect their eggs or to protect you know their babies the first bait that i always like to think about uh you know when it comes to like predators and stuff like that is something that imitates a bluegill so right here i have a z-man razor shad i believe this is and yeah it's kind of like a shad imitation but anything that has somewhat of a bluegill color that you can imitate a bluegill with is a good go-to why because bluegill love to feed on fry they love to eat bass eggs so bluegill come off as a really big predator to um, you know bass this time of year and there's nothing more that pisses you know bass off right now than another fish coming into their nest it's just no bueno so when it comes to rigging some something like this what a lot of guys will do is they'll tip this on like a swim jig which is you know a really great way to do that you get a little more action out of the skirt on the swim jig and uh, it's maybe a little more natural but personally myself I like to throw just this guy itself and I take a totally different approach at these so what most people will do if they just fish something like this um, you know they'll fish a Texas rig or they'll put like a swim bait you know hook on there like this with a swim bait head um, what I like to do is I like to take a um, flipping hook right here the reason I choose a flipping hook is because it's very big and it's very tough and it allows you to have a lot of access hook if you guys can tell right there I mean that's a lot of hook sticking out of that bait and although it does look funky and although it may take your confidence level down I find this to be a heck of a lot more beneficial why because these fish are guarding their nest they're not here to eat so what they're gonna do is they're gonna nip and peck it, you know, everything that comes in there to try and spook it off. What they'll tend to do is they'll pick up the tail sometimes, sometimes they'll grab it from the side, but they're not fully engulfing that bait. So I like to have a lot of access hook out of here for two reasons. The first reason being that if it does pick it up, you have an immediate hook right there and you're gonna get a hook set. But the second reason is, kind of follows up with the first is, when it comes to setting the hook, you don't want to rip on this thing. So like in the summer when you're flipping jigs and stuff, you know, everybody knows as bass fishermen, we we tear on that hook set. You got to get that, that you know, hook set hard and good to go. And when it comes to bed fishing, you only get so many opportunities. And like I said, sometimes when they just barely pick up this bait, if you have like a Texas rig or something where you're relying to rip on that bait, uh, you can rip that bait right out of that fish's mouth and you have the chance at spooking it or you know it's just giving up on it so that's kind of how i rig these things up i'll rig it with a big flipping hook and then what i'll do is i'll peg a heavy weight at the top the reason i go with a heavy weight is because you want to keep that bait in that nest you want to be able to to shake and pop and jig it and it maintains that specific area not when you're popping it and it's moving along so uh yeah that's my first go-to right there and Hopefully that works out for you. So say the you know bluegill fish imitation is not working out for you. The next thing I'm moving over to is a bass jig. This right here is a pretty heavy duty football jig tipped with a Berkeley Havoc Pit Boss. When it comes to fishing something like this, I primarily focus on weight and size. So I always pick something you know that's heavy again to keep it in that you know in that bed. But I also like to avoid using long baits. And the reason I do that is for, like I said, they like to nip and they like to peck. They're not taking a full engulf at this bait, so you really want just your best chance at getting a, that hook in that fish's mouth. So what we did here is we took this, this Havoc right here, this Berkeley Havoc bait, and um, I cut this pit boss in half. 
And the reason I did that is just literally to have less bait on there and have more access to the hook because when this bait lands in their bed, it's gonna be face down. So that means that's all the access they're gonna have to nip at it. So whether they nip it from the top or they nip it from the side, they're gonna have all that hook right there. I have a lot of exposed hook and it's gonna allow me to get a decent hookup ratio. So, you know, that's what works out for me. Um, say sometimes, again, this is bed fishing and these fish, there's baits that you'll throw in there and they will attack it immediately. And then sometimes they'll look at it and you gotta change things up a bit. So if this isn't working for you, the next thing I like to do is go nimble. Just get rid of the skirt completely, get rid of the jig and fish just a plain old crayfish. So why do I like to do this? Um, like I said, sometimes it just is more beneficial and it causes more of a strike. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll take something like this, I'll throw a Texas rig hook in there and I will peg it off with a bullet weight. And uh, sometimes this works better. So, you know, crayfish, pretty much the same imitation here, but you have a lot more going on here and a lot less going on here. And you know, like I said, it all really depends on the day and the fish. Sometimes this is more productive and sometimes they pay no interest into this and they go right for this. So moving into like another crayfish imitation is a tube. I don't know what it is about tubes, but you can't go wrong with them. Um, you're pretty much gonna get the same reaction as you would with these two baits. But like I said, going back to it, sometimes you just gotta show them something a little bit different. And you know, these all imitate the same things. These are imitating crawfish, imitating crawfish, and imitating a crawfish but they all have a little bit of a different presentation and sometimes that little bit of a different presentation tends to trigger a better bite. Going from that, we're kind of moving back into the whole swim bait ordeal. Um, I kind of left this out in the beginning. When I'm fishing these, sometimes this is too much. Again, I'm a big believer in just giving them something different if they're not feeding it. So you can try and work a bed for a little bit with something like this and they're just not paying the interest or maybe maybe they're biting this, right? But you can't get one to fully eat that bait. They're just nipping at the tail and they're just nipping and nipping and nipping. What I found out last year when I was actually fishing in North Carolina was going from, from a presentation like this where they were just pecking at it and moving into something like this. Now I've never seen you know guys do this. I guess actually guys do fish grubs um, definitely when it comes to bed fishing. But for some reason these little Mr. Crappie you know jigs, I found if I threw this on a little tiny jig and tossed it in their bed after fishing ooh, something like one of these guys is they just immediately wanted this. They completely annihilated this. And this is where I was getting most of my bed fish on was this guy right here. So don't be afraid to give them something really small. Don't be afraid, you know, change it up. You just really gotta piss them off and you're gonna get that bite out of them. And then last but not least, we have the good old Cinco. Um, why is this Cinco beneficial? Heck, I, I have no answer to this right now. Um, you know, it's very normal to throw some kind of finesse worm or throw a drop shot in a nest because again, these fish are just going to be protective and they're going to hit most things that try and, you know, encounter their eggs. But for some reason, man, I don't care if it's summer, spring, winter, fall, the Cinco never lets you down. And um, yeah, so that's going to be my final bait. And that's me just touching what I do when it comes to the spawn and when it comes to bed fishing. And you know, really quickly, I wanted to touch too because I feel like you guys are gonna ask uh, when it comes to fishing color. There's like a big controversy between fishing, you know, bed fishing natural colors and bed fishing, you know, crazy colors like pinks and blues and whites and stuff like that. What do I think on that? Um, whether this is proven or not, I personally don't think they care. I think they're being uh, very predatorial. Pred predatorial? Is that the right word? Pred Predatory. Predatorial? Does that, does that even make sense? I don't know. But I think that right now, this time of year, they're mainly just very predatorial. And, um, you know, they're just going to hit whatever is a threat to their eggs. So me personally, I always start with something, you know, obnoxious, like a bright pink or a white or like a blue like this, simply because it's easier to see when you're flipping in and out of those nests, you wanna see where that bait's going, you wanna see what's going on with it. And that usually works fine. But if they do get finicky and say, you know, I'm throwing a pink craw or pink worm in there and they're paying no interest into it, sometimes I'll move over to the same exact bait and fishing like a natural color, throwing that in there. And sometimes, yeah, I get a reaction strike. Sometimes it makes no difference and it's just time to move on to the next bait. So my overall advice here is these are some baits that I like to use that may or may not work for you. 
Um, but you know, these are my go-tos for sure. And uh, my best you know, advice for you guys is to hit the pond, find those nests, get it figured out yourself. Don't be afraid to bring five rods with you with five different baits because at the end of the day, this is a patience game and you're flipping in and out of there and you're gonna figure out what they're gonna hit because every single fish is different. You can go to this bed and they'll nail the crayfish and you can go to that bed and they're gonna nail the bluegill. It all just depends on the given circumstance. So hopefully that helps you guys get a little taste for some things you can do and uh, we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.